So I hope I didn't confuse you too much so far. I know it's a very difficult issue and a very complicated topic. But to give you a hands-on approach, I defined a few rules. If you obey these rules, you will probably get by in 90 or 95% of patients. Rule number one, if echo is normal and the patient is below 45 years of age and E is taller than A wave, as in this example, then the patient simply has normal diastolic function and you do not need to do anything else. Rule number two, if the A wave is taller than the E wave, in other words, the E to A ratio is less than one, then the patient has impaired relaxation. Filling pressure in these patients is usually normal or only mildly elevated. If you want to know if filling pressure is normal or elevated, you can perform tissue Doppler imaging. If the E to E prime ratio is more than 12 to 15, then the patient has an elevated filling pressure. Rule number three. If the echo is abnormal, in other words, if the patient has hypertensive heart disease with left ventricular hypertrophy, reduced left ventricular function, or any other pathology, and the patient is above 65 years of age, and E is taller than A wave, in other words, the E to A ratio is more than one, then the patient must have pseudonormal filling, he cannot have normal filling pattern, and left ventricular filling pressure is probably elevated. If you want to be 100% sure, you can also perform other measurements. For example, you can look at the deceleration time or the E to E prime ratio. And remember, you can also use the 2D image because patients who have elevated filling pressures usually also have an enlargement of the left atrium. Rule 4. If the E velocity is twice or at more than twice the size of the A velocity, in other words, the ratio is above 2, then the patient must have restrictive filling pattern and left atrial or left ventricular filling pressures are usually significantly elevated. There is one exception to this rule. In young, very healthy adults, you will have supernormal diastolic function, which means that during early diastole, we have suction, which causes a very high E wave and thereby a pattern which looks very similar to a restrictive filling pattern. However, in reality, you will never have a problem to distinguish the two. Patients with supernormal pattern are young, healthy, and often athletes. This is such an example where we have an E wave, which is taller than the A wave. Then we perform a Valsalva maneuver, and all of a sudden, you can see that the A wave is taller than the E wave. We reversed the pseudonormal pattern to a relaxation pattern, and thereby demasked and elevated filling pressure. This diagram again shows you the different grades of diastolic dysfunction and also what happens if you perform Valsalva. So if you perform Valsalva in a patient who has a pseudonormal pattern, you can reverse this pattern to a relaxation pattern. If you perform Valsalva in a patient who has a restrictive filling pattern, you can reverse it to a pseudonormal pattern if it is reversible and you cannot reverse it if it is an irreversible pattern. Here's a demonstration of a patient which shows you how you can apply these rules. Let's look at diastolic function in this patient. Let's start with the mitral inflow signal. Okay, so we freeze the image here. And we can immediately see that the A wave is taller than the E wave. So this shows that the patient has impaired relaxation. And what we'll do now is we'll measure the maximum velocity, which is somewhere in the range of 0.8 of the E wave. And then we'll also perform tissue Doppler of the mitral annulus. So let's put the post wave Doppler here in the region of the annulus. Okay. And then we'll freeze the image and measure E prime, which is 0.5. And then we, we calculate the E to E prime ratio. We get a value of 16, which shows that the patient has elevated left atrial filling pressures. So you see it's not that difficult after all.
But always keep in mind that we have to look at diastolic dysfunction in the context of the whole heart of all pathologies and of the clinical situation. Here's another example. So I will now show you how to analyze a patient uh, for diastolic function. This is a patient who has an E to A ratio which is above 1. So the E wave is taller than the A wave. So the question is, does the patient have normal filling or does he have pseudonormal filling? Let's measure the size or the, the maximum velocity of the A wave, which is somewhere in the range of 0.8. Okay, and now let's perform a tissue Doppler across the mitral valve annulus. Okay, this is the maximal E prime velocity, which is 0.7 or 0.6, 0.7, somewhere in that region. If we now calculate the E to E prime ratio, we get a value which is above 12, 13, um, which means the patient has diastolic dysfunction. Uh, in other words, elevated left atrial filling pressure. So the E to A ratio which is, could also be normal, is certainly not a normal pattern, but a pseudonormal pattern. But there's also other ways of looking at this patient, at his diastolic function. Just by purely looking at the 2D image, you can recognize that the patient has severe left ventricular hypertrophy, he has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and such patients just cannot have normal diastolic function. So. Clearly, all you would need to have is the 2D image. And there's another way of looking at it. Let's take a look at the post-wave Doppler signal again. Okay, so we see, again, as E and A are about the same size. Now let's let him press through the Valsalva maneuver. And see, with the Valsalva maneuver, the A wave increases even more more. Here we go. And all of a sudden we have a relaxation pattern thereby demasking the pseudonormal pattern and showing that the patient does not have a normal but an elevated left atrial filling pressure. I personally believe if things are made too complex then the people don't use them. And if they don't use them they're useless. So that's why I think that you should use simple things such as a simple approach also to diastolic function.